chapter 6 Night in Training Let's do this What was that? Okay <laughs> Droplets of water echoed in the puddles as we walk carefully to the cavern Here led the way happily You sure? It looks like the last one we were in are you kidding? They're small journals. Its sediments are mostly limestone and the roof is high. Of course. Higher. Leave it to another dragon to know his surroundings. I like underwater games. They make great liars. Mari seemed cheery as well. The numerous branching tunnels make me nervous, but my companions seem unfazed by it all. I don't get it. It's like you know where you're going. Dragon intuition? Here, Grown and Miss Mario shoot me up penitently. We actually came here earlier thanks to uh, having friends help. <sighs> so much for a promise. I'm to sorry. Myself. I know, but you were determined and I don't want to let him out of my sight. However, Master Bedros wishes for him to be accompanied by a heaven kind at each altar to prove he's not going straight from one cave to another. And not just any heaven kind, but when the hub is there with him the whole time. Be good enough, film my own and seeing the whole thing. This ship never was. Um, uh, no, it sounds like you have no influence here. So, something like that. I argued and I wrote, obviously, but before I could question further, Kira knows we have arrived. There was a small carver, carved a statue on a, a nerd dragon set on a block. Kira just turned accusingly at it before <laughs> turning to me. Do you even try to make impressive ones? Think we will be pleased with this? A life-size one will be more worth it. I'm sorry. I gave him a gentle shove and stuck it into my mouth. He glared, but his usual intensity has dismissed somewhat. I was planning to remain where I was, but I saw a lion retreat to give Kier some space. I'd rather not. not. Uh, no, I don't want to feel like I'm eavesdropping on a private conversation. I reflected back on the art on the first altar. It doesn't seem that personal to me. You can only hear Kira speak. That did not convince Omari, and he merely kept walking back until he had vanished around the bend. Maybe Omari had a point? As I turned. Hey, where are you going? To give you some privacy? Did you forget already? You have to stay. Right. You are heaven guy. Uh, exactly. I shift my weight until I feel comfortable. I kept my arms behind my back as I watched Kier kneel down, then closed his eyes to focus. Moments later, his ears perk up. Yes, she's here now. So freaky. Mm -hmm. Yes, we left uh, Perry. Barry. And they helped something called a carriage to get to Oliver. We were attacked. Heaven kind fists are pretty useful. I covered my mouth as I smirk at the moment. From there, Kier chronicled the size of zones of the plaza. Heaven can like to pretend to do things they actually can't do for the sake of people clapping. They're driving to perform odd things, like eating fire. Is that even edible? He also mentioned the presence of other Karnkai. He concluded his account and after a few minutes, stood up. He placed one hand on his sip as he stared at the statue, deep in the when I was sure the conversation was over, I approached him and blend in. Is that everything? Yeah. Did he say how many altars to visit afterward? Thankfully, there's only a few left, and there's many <laughs> around Oliver. So I leave it in your hands to get some Let's interesting do this. You can count on it. And I think I still owe you a visit to the marketplace, so we can restock on some supplies. We are Johnny Larry and returned to the bustling market of Central Oliver. What I thought would only take the morning and end up straight to the mid afternoon, given how much we explore all the various shops and stuff. At the end, I was pretty much hot. I slumped down on the bench between my companions, blankly gazing at the sky. It's like babysitting kids. Overground kids. Elmari was happily clutching a small glass blown bubble. He held it up, and its transparent blue surface shimmered like wheel wow. in the I still can't believe me you bought me these! I've never had anything heaven come made before! 
How could I not? You were making that face. This one. His voice changed, as if the evidence of sweetness and innocence that had crumbled my defenses before. Yes, that one. Maybe he wasn't so sweet and innocent if he was using that face to his advantage. He was nonchalant to stop in his own face with various desserts and pastries. I placed a hand over my forehead before sliding it down to my chin in aggravation. I said I did a few, not all of them. <laughs> Elizabeth found something he likes. I would prefer if it was something that wouldn't give him a sugar rush. He approached the steps, but said nothing, since he was still preoccupied with chewing. Now that uh, we were all set, I stood up and searched Arjun Valeria on my mind. I'm going to check the guild and see if there's any potions I can accept for tomorrow. It's got something to do with fighting. I'd have preferred it was a more peaceful one. I'll see what I can do. I doubt I can find one that plays your boat. I gave them a quick wave, intending not to take long as I headed for the guild. Inside the headquarters, I surveyed the giant board, hoping to find something that will catch my eye. Which one? Go. Mm, which mission? Uh, go fishing, sapphire, salmon, and season for my back is sword, and I'm gonna go to fish touch. Would you um, save the kitchens? The kitchens? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> the chickens! Incense rescue mission. I needed to find this important person now. Gotta find nice shades. I need these completely harmless herbs for nothing. That's something not sinister. It's definitely something sinister. It is. Wow. Honey glazed apple tarts. I need 10 jars of honey from red bees hives. Avril feathers. I played the lead for Bailey and I simply must have some Avril feathers to fill my back. Swing. Wow. This is awesome. The Avatarol are those big stuff right i really want to try this out i really want to try this out but this something this this sounds amazing it could be awesome and it's well paid it's so well paid okay that's it Since Ilmari burned any quests that involved fighting another hand guy, we decided to focus on wildlife. <laughs> After that, rather than embarrassing in the country with laboratorial bug when I couldn't even walk, I decided to take my revenge. It was so bizarre finding an animal that could usually be crushed under my claws, and I immediately hated it either. Punching into mid air, it was totally satisfying thought. And even Aura and Ilmari could only stand around and gawk or shake their heads. I don't get the appeal of decorating yourself in feathers though. That kind of culture makes no sense. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, okay. We get a lot of money. So let's go to the battle tournament. <sighs> this should be fun. Why not? Why not? Ugh! Should be awesome. Jeez. Okay. I really want to do it. I want to do it. Please bet against me just this by making you holding up. <laughs> I, I want to do it. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh no. Yeah, uh, you're just repeating yourself now. Yes, you are repeating yourself. Oh, that was awesome. Okay, so uh, intense rescue mission. Arlene immediately jumped to this one, thinking it was a crucial request. She was disappointed when it turned out to be a child missing cat, but was determined to help no matter how big or small the task. We look all over Oliver and find the cat stuck in a tree, which Kiri easily retrieved. <laughs> Just as I was about to assume he was strictly an animal lover at heart, I'd scotch him and he would turn into a tree. I really end up saving the cat since Kiri refused to go near it again. The child was happy to get his pet back. I find having kind of touched their pet rather fascinating. <laughs> that was awesome. Let's do the free samples. As soon as I read this pose out loud, he wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> Getting the honey from the aggressive bees was nearly impossible, until I mentioned that, that bees didn't like smoke and that it will drive them away. Ilmari thought a conjuring fog would produce a similar result, but here found out it didn't at all. 
Luckily, the big officer Guldi or scared that he doubled their reward for Kier. But Mari and I secretly wanted to enable Darthet to send that to us, after all. <laughs> Despite this thing, Skiers was satisfied and claimed it was the best thing he ever tasted. <laughs> best mission ever. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we go to the battle tournament? <laughs> okay, we're not going to the battle tournament, I understand. Save the chickens because I said their name wrong the other time. They are so cute! The mission was rather simple and boring. All we had to do was mend some holes in the fence and the farmer overlook. But Mari was captivated by the chickens though. He wouldn't stop following them and pestering with tiny jello stings anymore. Arda warned him repeat repeatedly, and Mari learned that if one annoyed the chickens long enough, they would then gobble him. <laughs> It was nice to see his curiosity getting him into trouble. Heaven comes sure keeps a lot of animals for food and glutted products. Arak suddenly sleep out something about the sport of cow tippet and I immediately tried it out. We didn't get a rev reward after that. <laughs> Once again, I was scanning the bulletin board sign and as I longly gazed at the job postings that I only accepted two nights. I brought my badge, pretty level it, K I T, Kit, Kit, <laughs> Night in Train, wishing it was the efficient one. Well, can't dwell on it well. I need to do a number of missions before they consider me. In the corner of a ghoul was a group of mice, talking quietly amongst themselves. I thought I saw one look at me before he adverted his eyes hastily. The girl beside him <sighs> giggled. Huh? Kier, who was standing beside me, glared daggers at the group, grinning his teeth menacingly. What are you doing? Stop that! He balked and averted his gaze but said nothing. Stay Twitch. focused! Stay focused. There's a patrol one. Are you up for a nice long walk outside the city? I guess. Or I could ask Mari. However, I think he wants to observe the glass Leave it to me. again. I'll go. Thanks. Thanks. You're actually being a pretty nice guy here. I am amazed. I handed the job posting to the receptionist, who did a little derup and gave me a small map. I'm probably more of training and exercise than her real patrol, but it's something at least. I rejoined Kier, and we exited the bustling city of Oliver and entered a long, sprawling farmland that extended beyond it. There was a well-worn path, so the map was hardly needed. Kier and I walked side by side, talking in the scenery. Take it in the scenery. Almost all of the leaves were now baby fire of yellow, red, and orange. It's a lot of them. Can't believe when we left Barry it was still summer. Mm. So much has happened, don't you think? Mm. When we first met, you barely talked to me. I'm glad it's different now. <sighs> or maybe not. I took a white spade forward and turned around, cousin healed halt. I started to feel topic. What is it? You soak a lot, but now you're soaking what deep in talk. That's not like you. Or with it. What's on your mind? Um. How do you handle it? Handle what? What people have been saying about you. Oh, well, I do hear directly a lot. You have been better hearing than I do. They say you use your mother's name to get where you are. That you're nothing like her and that you're not really <laughs> love to it. Thank you, Kier. You really need to be reminded. What made you want to walk the same path as she did, anyway? Why do you want to become a knight so badly? Finally, the question both boys had seemed to avoid asking me directly. I inhale deeply as I prepare my meaningful and profound answer. Well, you see... <laughs> Knights are so cool! And they have swords and shiny armor and stuff and everyone looks up at them. They are always do the honorable thing. Right wrongs and stop evil in tracks. And they help people with their problems. They fight of all kinds of monsters, Whoa. slay dragons, and wait, what? And rescue fair maidens and let them distress you. Uh, uh, but the last part were fall in love with the knights, and the knights sigh and go, I'm sorry, but my hair belongs to the part of justice and righteousness. Oh, lady knight, they cry. Then they say, Rose, I'm love. I get it, I get it. See, see, see? I was practically bouncing on my heels. I get to level you up of here. 
hands clapping fists over my chest. That's why I want to be one so bad. Aren't you doing most of that already? Well, besides slaying dragons and leaving behind a trail of broken hearts. I guess so. So I won the title too. I wanted to be official, recognized by the Sun and Moon Council. What about you? Aren't there any dreams you're chasing? You sure seem like a free spirit type. That's because I am. He stretched his arms up and sat back on the grass. At first I was going to chide him for taking break during patrol, but I said to have a few minutes of rest was acceptable. I sat next to him. I'm not out for this knowledge keeper business. I hate it, but my master insists. Knowledge keeper? He glared at me in frustration. <laughs> really? You spent all this time with us and you still know nothing about Dragonkind? Hey, you never tell me stuff, and Elmari, well, <laughs> you know Elmari. Always goes back to Hemenkind talk. Dragons have a long history, and we record everything orally. Everything we know is passed down to a dragon called the Knowledge Keep, who will specialize in something. It could be plants, animals, traditional stories, important uh. events. He sat in defeat and propped on a left elbow, nestling his chin in his palm. Chuckling my knees up, I hugged him and planned to get a good look at his face. He peered back at me impatiently. I don't have the concentration or focus to retain all that knowledge. When I was younger, they thought I'd be good at it, and my master picked me. Obviously not, though. I find it easier to stop game at this point. If I don't care, they don't care. It doesn't seem to work on Master Petrus, though. wonder what he even sees in me at this point. How do you do it? With all those expectations placed on you. Me? Um, uh, I leaned on my knees and stared off the I'm horizon. Not sure. This is the first time I've considered my mom's name as a burden more than help. I guess I just accept it. I know I won't ever leave to up I would never leave up to her legacy, and people perceive that. I can force someone to see me only for me. However, I su have support from my family, the people in Barry, and of, of course, you two guys. They love me for who I am, and they are the ones that matter. I gave him a wire smirk. So, Kier, how do you view me? As hourly as a pale imitation of Lady Bayard? <laughs> are you asking me? I don't know enough about your mom's legacy to compare you to. You're doing fine. I think you're a good Thanks. knight in your own right. Not in training, but thanks. You'll never end up slaying a dragon, though. Oh? With how often you annoy me, I could cross off that night accomplishment list very <laughs> easily. <laughs> Please, even at this point, I can take you on. Is that a challenge? He stood up and buried his teeth, quite in his stance. I sighed, wondering if his, this was even a good idea. But I also got up. I wiped the grass off my steer and touched my sword hilt. His eyes and contest <laughs> thing. What's this? Really in our weapon? I'm on the arm. This is hard to bear. Oh, I know I'm not good with hand to hand combat. Stand as mirror though caused me a toss and discovered it. This is a stupid idea, but sure. <laughs> it is a stupid idea. I bit my knees and glitched my fist. Wonder is how to start a fight. So, do we count on three or this way for. <laughs> ah! Before I could finish my sentence, he ran into me and tackled me into the ground. The wind was knocked out of me and screamed my shoulders. I glowered at him. I went. Hey, I was not done talking. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath, trying to concentrate. Whoa. What are you doing? I opened one eye. Something I should have done before. What am I doing? I forcibly pushed him down. He got in surprise. I rolled over him, so I was now standing with my arms held down. He blinked. I he did it! Too easy, ah! Another tussle and he was looming over me again. His long hair grasped my chin. Bring it. If I was in my true form, you will be crushed under my foot. Back! Yeah! 
I wrestled him, slamming him down so I was not on top again. Even in your dragon for if I had my sword, I have swear to you a dozen times. Please, it the never feel like splinters. Hey, splinters screwed along. Have you ever got a wall? Reloot it again. And this time, he bends my wrists. Unable to wriggle under his grip by his side, I rest my head back in the grass as my little focus spell faded. If Kier's body was that of a normal heaven kind, I would have stood a better chance. You win. Only because I wasn't alone. <laughs> right, right. Whatever makes you sleep soundly at night. His grasp on me loosened, but he did not budge. Instead, his eyes examined me interestedly before lining over my neck. He inched closer and I panic, shaking my head frankly. <laughs> wait, wait, don't don't take a bite out of me. I you already said you won. I struggle and see hastily the goat rolling off me. <sighs> Ugh. Cannibalism. I don't know. Right, she's a drunk. That wasn't being some serious person of space there. <laughs> what did my mom tell me to do when men got that close to me? Wait, I didn't have my sword on me, so her advice would have been useless. What did my mom say to me? <gasps> I rubbed my neck self-consciously as I sat up, while Kier dangles his body away. After retrieving my scabbard, I noticed Kier was facing him patiently. I agree, we have pressed enough. Let's finish the patrol and go home. Uh. Kier? Oh, yeah, sure. He rubbed his forehead as if contemplating something. I resisted commanding since I knew he would insist it was nothing and refused to answer. Instead, I gave him a friendly slap on the shoulder to help him fuck up. Right! Let's go ahead. Then, let's go. You can tell your master the heaven guy and like long pointless folks afterward. <laughs> the master a weak smile but sent me. We finished the patrol and I reported it to the receptionist. Kier remained taciturn the whole time and barely said a word when we part. I wonder if it was something I said or maybe he finds Patros utterly boring. Maybe he does. <laughs>